Uh, good morning. Um, yeah, I know I don't have any eyebrows, so don't fucking come for me, please. <laughs> I ain't in no mood, but, um, I knew I had to make a video and I'm too tired to put on any sort of makeup today. Um, <laughs> sorry. Listen, if you don't like the way I look, just fucking do something with the video and like just listen to what I'm saying because this is what's really important. Uh, this video is about something that's going on in real life and it's kind of like affecting me even though it has nothing to do with me. I, I'm watching from a distance and so I felt like I needed to address something and I know so many of us that are in recovery, y'all are going to just believe and agree with what I'm saying because it's obvious and what I'm trying I'm really trying to reach the people who are struggling with their recovery um, and don't understand that maybe why it's not working or maybe you know they're really, really they feel like they're really trying hard um, and just it, it's not working for them so I just want to offer something and I'm not saying that it goes for every single one of you but I have been in recovery um for a little over two years now and I'm around because I work in the field now as a recovery coach now I'm watching all of these things unfold and yeah it's triggering me like I used to be that way like let's you know let's talk about it because you don't have to make the same mistakes that I made. You know, I'm here to tell you that da 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 So this is now what I want to talk about because it's a really, really important um, subject and a really important matter that is real life and people are doing this every single day. So this is what I'm noticing and I'll tell you the reason why it's kind of affecting me, you know, as a recovery coach and uh, totally new at it. Um, like with the certificate new, like a certified whatever. I'm new at that point. But I have been helping people for a very long time before I even knew what a recovery coach was. So um, that being said, the, the reason why I'm, I'm bringing all of this up is because obviously um, I have friends who are struggling now. Do I hang out with them outside? No, absolutely not. Um, you know, because my recovery comes first. And I don't feel that bad where I am, you know, I feel obligated to, like, put myself at risk to, like, you know, appease other people or, make, or not make them feel bad about what they're going through. I will, of course, always help... Um, friends or or strangers uh, or even people who don't really like me I'd still be willing to help and I get that I had turned into one of those annoying recovery people that everybody talks about um, but it's it's just looked at that way and I, I of course I've learned this from experience uh, personal experience from actually being annoyed with recovery people and then becoming one of those people it's all a matter of where you're at in your mind of course it's all a matter of um you know how willing you are to be a part of the recovery community and how important your recovery is to you so um again recovery sobriety two totally different things and um we, we can get into that later but so I am on the outside looking in to a, situ a few situations of people that I know personally who are obviously still using. So you have these people that get drug tested um, randomly at the clinics and stuff like that. Like not just my clinic, but all clinics. That's like you know what it is if you're there if you're a client whether you're on a medication or not you're still going to get drug tested it's part of your um uh treatment plan uh because of and, the, and i feel like the reason why this is happening is because a lot of the time most of the time majority of the time 
the people who are new in, in, in their sobriety are not telling the truth. So that's what this video is about. It is about people who are still either in active addiction or maybe they're only using on the weekend or maybe they're like dipping and dabbing here and there and they just can't get it together. Um, I, I get that a lot of it comes from shame, but if you're in a treatment center and you have resources, uh, the best thing to do is tell the truth. A and that's not for anybody else's sake, but your own. And, um, of course I, I've been there, done that. You know what I'm saying? Like I literally used to have that same mindset. So if I can help you understand that you don't have to do that and it is not in your best interest to do that, um, then maybe I can, I can help you that way. Uh, you don't have to make the same mistakes that I made. That's kind of the reason why I wanted to become a coach of some sort and, and, and then eventually a counselor because I have this experience that other people, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other people are going through and I've already gone through that stage of it. So I kind of like want to help them maneuver their way around uh, sobriety and through their, their recovery and find their path that works for them. I hope I'm not boring you with this, but I, I you know, I really want to be on the same page when I'm telling this, this kind of story, um, because it is a true story and it happens every single day. And I know you guys can relate. Um, but I did just wake up a little while ago. So I'm kind of like, you know, uh, I don't mean to ramble. Um, and the reason why I do that is because I sometimes, uh, I have, uh, this self-conscious thing where I don't feel like I'm explaining myself properly. So I, I overdo it. So I do apologize for that in advance. Okay. Let's get down to like the actual story. There are a few people and I, I'll try not to use like, you know, gender pronouns and stuff like that because you know, it's just not right. I don't feel like I should be telling anybody else's story, but because this is so prominent in the recovery community, um, uh, it's just really important for me to bring up. So without using names or gender pronouns, there are people at my, my, uh, workplace slash therapy place slash treatment center, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, that I had gotten close to over the course of the last, uh, probably eight months, eight, nine months. And, um, all I've ever wanted from people to understand was that I, I can't help you if you're lying. I don't know why they feel like maybe they have to lie to me. Um, especially even from the very beginning. I don't know if it's like kind of the fact that I was already in recovery for a year when a year and some months when they first met me. Or the fact that, you know, I kind of, I ran group for a very long time. So they look at me in that, not like authority, but kind of like, uh, you know, this is the fucking kind of like a council, but I'm not, you know, I was just helping out my clinic and volunteering and running group for everybody. So that could be also a big reason why they lie. But here's the deal. Even people who run these clinics and these treatment centers they know when you're lying it's like you can say over and over again that something didn't happen even if it has nothing to do with addiction or recovery you could say something over and over and over and over again and you might make yourself believe that but that doesn't make it true in reality and I get that reality is perception but for the fact that did you actually go like pick this up, put it in your mouth and swallow it? Did you get your straw, cut it up and snort the shit? Like what did you do? Um, and I get that a, a lot of it is shame, but that's what we are here for. You know what I mean? Like we went through that shame too. And so you can't, look, I'm not judging you. Like, you know, I've done probably a lot worse things than they have, you know, and and I, and I was doing it as a, an active mother. So, I mean, that's kind of shitty. It was really shitty of me to, to put myself 
first like that and, and uh, be so selfish um, with my own life when it would affect my children. But that's here they're up nor there. So um, if I can if I can offer one thing, um, don't lie. If you're really serious about recovery, don't lie. And just because you say it over and over and over again doesn't make it true. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody's gonna believe you. The facts are the facts. The best facts are what? Evidence. You know what I mean? Evidence being urines, positive urines, because um I'll give an example. A person comes in, they missed uh, some of their treatment uh, over the last week, and um, she comes in with a story and her whole entire family. Uh, damn it, I said a gender pronoun. <laughs> Fuck. Anyway, this person comes in with their family and says, look, I was obviously on something, but I don't know what. So they give her a drug test and comes up positive for a medication that she's never taken before. I, and I'm talking about the treatment medication. She, shoo, sha, shoo, sha, did it again. <laughs> Fuck. This person used to be on Suboxone. It, it is no longer on Suboxone. Um, and when this person took the urine, it came out positive for methadone so <laughs> how'd that happen I don't know okay who are you with now this is a private conversation like this wasn't at the clinic because this person is a friend of mine who were you with the night before this happened no answer okay do you think somebody would poison you I'm saying this to appease the person because of course I know what happened and uh she was like, um, well, my mom keeps laughing. I was like, don't put that shit in my head. Listen, I don't give a fuck how crazy moms are unless they have something mentally, like, like Munchausen by proxy. They're not going to poison you. Uh, <laughs> so, um, actually, I mean, you don't, you never know this day and age. So whatever. Um, uh, then I said to her, <laughs> oh, fuck. I said to them, this person, um, wait the next day did you take a drug test again the next day they said yes um and again came out positive for methadone okay so she's like all honest about that and i think the the reason why that this person is being honest about those things is because she's tr they're trying to come off as they are an open book but but methadone or any other drug doesn't just appear in your system and I get that there are false positives I get that but I've been at that place longer than all of those other people and I've and I've been clean the whole time I've been there never once have I had a false positive I'm just gonna say that right off the bat never once had a false positive even at any of my other clinics, I've never had a false positive. It came out positive. It's because I used, um, regardless of what I wanted to uh, portray to other people. Um, if it came out positive, it's because I used. Um, that's why I said, do it again. You know, take the test again. Maybe it was a false positive. They took the test again, came out positive again. I said, okay, then it was in your system, period. There's no way around it. Um, this person said that the morning they was they were supposed to come to group, they put their child in the car to drop them off at school and drove for probably like 30 minutes in the wrong direction. Uh, and then just wound up never coming. And then uh, that was the day that she said she never knew what happened. So I finally kept asking this person, why? why? Like, who were you with? Who were you with? Who were you with? Until she answered me. Until they answered me. And they said a name. And this person is on methadone. Um, and is also an active user. Um, but also lies about it. 
it's frustrating as a coach because not it's frustrating as a person from the outside watching um because uh one i'm i'm watching my friends you know people I, that i actually care about um throwing themselves down a rabbit hole and um the age thing is incredible because i as a coach i should not be judging based off of age but for some reason and i can't get this out of my head i feel like and and tell you know obviously i know i'm wrong but am i the only person that feels this way uh when you have a, a, a person whether it be a male or a female of a certain age like like um m more than middle-aged or no maybe about middle-aged uh like let's just say 45 plus let's just say 45 plus the, the person's about 10 years older than that but still um does it frustrate you when you see people of a certain age um, acting like 16, 20 maybe, maybe less? I don't know. Um, does it frustrate you? Because it frustrates the fuck out of me. Like I, I have like these expectations, and I know I'm wrong, um, but I'm working on it. So I, I, and I do talk to my counselor and my mentor about these things. I'm very, very honest with them about uh, I have trouble separating emotions from, from my job, you know, and, uh, I, and I feel the best way to get over these things is to be honest with these people around me that could help me. And that's why I'm making this video because nobody's going to be able to help you, but yourself and how you're going to help yourself is basically saying, okay, I have this problem. I'm trying to get out of the problem. What are these steps that I have to take to get away from the problem? Well, the first part is going to be admitting stuff. And you know what? Here's the deal. You don't have to tell nobody nothing. But you got to tell yourself something. And that something is the truth. Otherwise, it's going to be like, you know, uh, what is the point? If you're not going to be honest with yourself, then there is no recovery, there is no sobriety because you're just going to fool yourself into doing whatever the fuck you want to do. So that doesn't work. And you know what? It, it, look, these people don't have to lie to me. I see it. But I think because they're my friend, I, I get like, you know, kind of offended because I'm like, I've been there, done that. What are you lying to me for? I can fucking pinpoint that shit as soon as you walk through that door. I know something is different. They have these certain characteristics, um, either a physical or, or like something a personality wise that they're just, they just change. And I always noticed it. And I do notice, I, I listen, I'm a good listener and I'm not doing that so I can fucking clock people, you know, like, oh, that's not what you said last week. You know, I'm the, that's not why I do that. I just am a genuinely good listener because I want to hear these people. I want to make them feel like they're important and they are important. They're important to me, um, whether I know them or not. And what they say to me, I feel is very, very important to their uh, recovery because if I hear something that's a pattern, I can pinpoint it for them if they can't see it and then help them that way. So, uh, and I am a very good listener. I hear what people say and, and then I get triggered when they say something different and, and I'm like, wait, 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 let's talk about this because there was something in the past where you said da, 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 da and I just want to clarify because you're obviously telling me this story because you care about what I think. So, um, I, I'm not one of those assholes that are be like, that's not what you said last week. No, that's not me anymore anyway. So, uh, if you're watching this and you are a person that's still struggling to get there, there are people who care about you, but then there's going to be people who don't. So, uh, you have to figure that out for yourself. And the only way you're going to do that is if you stay sober and think with a clear head. So, um, the next time like you feel like expressing yourself look at the people around you first you know what i'm saying if you can't trust these people like in a group setting let's say a meeting or something yo you don't have to be there like you don't have to talk save that shit for you know the individual counseling and if you don't have an individual counselor i say i really highly suggest because group counseling only goes so far and it's very helpful, 
but it only goes so far. So, um, I mean, I need some feedback. Uh, and I get, I get that point that I totally cannot separate my emotions, uh, from my job. I can't because I just, I genuinely care. And, I, and I'm also a mother too. So it's like, you know, that's just, it's just in me to care. That's why I, I fucking started doing this whole goddamn thing. So, uh, what, are, what is some feedback you have for me? Because I'm struggling, like not obviously with addiction, but I'm struggling with other shit, you know, like I, I, uh, I'm struggling with my emotions because I want to help people and they don't want to be helped, but then they lie to my face. So how could we be friends, you know? And, and I would never do anything to hurt nobody. And, and, and when I, when I got out of line a few times because I've gotten so frustrated that I flipped my shit I immediately apologized the same within the same hour. Um, I just felt, I felt insulted, you know, because I do explain to everybody I've been there, done that. Like I understand I could see, I am the one with the clear head. How are you thinking that I can't see this? You know what I mean? I, I, I see the difference in your personality, you know, your physical attributes. Like I see it all with a clear head <laughs> and no eyebrows. <laughs> so my vision is not like, you know, being fucked up because uh because uh, of fucking hair in my face. I can tell you that that shit ain't happening over here. So I could see what the fuck, man. Like so like I feel like they're not my friends. Which like I really don't care at this point because if you're going to lie to me, then I don't need to be your friend anyway. I'm not going to waste my time and my emotions give it a fuck. You know? Sorry. I am so sick. I'm so sorry. Like, I really don't feel good. These these allergies are fucking with me because I live in fucking College Station, which is a valley. Anyway. I'm about to go into H-E-B and think about this. But I really wanted to make this video. And I'm so sorry that it's so long. And I'm sorry I don't know how to edit, but too bad. I... I don't, I don't know. I definitely want some feedback. And then to also to those people that are struggling, please, like, if you really want to get help, the only way you're going to get help is if you're honest with yourself. And once you're honest with yourself, then you have to be honest with your counselor or your peer, your peers, if you trust them. Uh, when people tell you that they could see like, when, especially you're dealing with other addicts. So just understand that every person that's sitting in the room with you, they could see it. Especially if they are um, sober or in recovery, you know, with a clear head. How do you, I mean, I, I, like, in my mind, I don't understand how you feel like you're bullshitting a whole room full of bullshitters that have probably done the same fucking thing at some point. So it just boggles my mind, especially like when you get to that certain age, you know what I'm saying? Like, and also just like a side note, if you're sitting in a room and you're, or you're at a meeting and you're all talking about your stories, if you've done pills, just say you've done pills, you know, if you've done heroin or Coke or whatever, just speak your truth but please don't be one of those people that go yeah I was I was I was really bad with pills but I was about to do heroin I was about to stick that needle in my arm and I'm going to tell you why that that's that's really insulting to people who have done that uh we work really really hard to uh move forward in our life uh as heroin addicts we hated ourselves when we were on heroin for the most part, we didn't want to look in a mirror. Yo, there's something about that drug that makes you fucking hate yourself. Uh, you give up morals, you give up ethics, you give up your freedom, your freedom of mind. Uh, you give up so much, and then when you work that hard to get clean, and then you see other people like like just doing doing pills alone. Yes, that's horrible. Why do you gotta throw in there that I almost did heroin? No, the fuck you didn't. No, you didn't. You didn't almost do shit. Okay? You're lucky you didn't fucking thrive off of that. Because you, you, you're basically saying like, you know, 
uh, I don't know. It's like, it's just like a slap in the face. Like you're glorifying heroin or whatever else. I'm just using heroin because that's what I've seen people say. And I am an, am a, am a recovering heroin addict. So I'm like, the fuck you mean you almost did heroin first of all you sound dumb as fuck and second of all that's insulting like don't fucking glorify that shit like we're all out here trying to fucking survive and you're talking about oh i almost did heroin like bitch you watch way too many fucking discovery id channels and shit so just cut that shit out because one it's not cute i don't know if you're just trying to relate or whatever the fuck you're trying to do but when I was in treatment just for pills, I never did. Like, I don't get that mindset. You know what I mean? Like, it, I feel like that that shit is insulting. We work real hard to um, maintain our self-confidence after we um, have gone through all that shit that we've done to ourselves. And then here comes. Hello, my name is so-and-so. I'm a drug addict. Yes. Uh, my drug of choice was uh, Xanax and painkillers. But, uh, yeah, I almost did heroin. Oh, shit, really? Oh, man, how'd that work? Like, did you go, like, call somebody? Did you meet somebody? Like, did you find, like, a per No, but I was thinking about it. Shut the fuck up, okay? You sound dumb as fuck. <laughs> I'm being mean. I'm just tired. But, like, that shit annoys the fuck out of me. Like... No, the fuck you didn't. You don't even know anybody that does heroin. Shut the fuck up. Like, don't fucking glorify that shit. I hate that shit. It ain't fucking glorifying. Just be lucky that all you've ever done is fucking pills. And that's bad enough as it is. A drug is a drug is a drug is a drug. Why are you trying to make yourself seem more of a piece of shit than what you already are? Like, that doesn't make sense to me. Why? You think it's funny when I fucking go into a room and be like, Hey, you know, my name is Danielle and, you know, I'm a recovering addict and uh, my drug of choice was like heroin and shit, you know? Like, how would that look if I was like, yeah, my drug of choice was heroin, but you know, I only snorted it. I didn't, I didn't shoot no needles and shit. And like, what the fuck are you talking about? Heroin is fucking heroin! Like, stop! You ain't better just because you fucking snorted it as opposed to shooting it. Bitch, shut the fuck up. Like, really? Like, all you fucking people that are trying to be... Like, that mindset is like, yo, drugs are cool. And the worse drugs you've done, the cooler you are. That shit ain't how it works. Say no fucking nightclub and shit. The fuck you talking about? This ain't no gang. I almost killed somebody. I took a knife, but there was nobody outside and shit, you know? Like, what the fuck? What the fuck are you talking about? Shut the fuck up. You didn't almost kill nobody. Shut the fuck up. Oh, my God. Uh, all right, goodbye, okay? Like, just take what I say and fucking think about it and just fucking just shut the fuck up, okay? Bye.